I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey, Tim is Ripper here. We guys are doing a fantastic today. Video on the deep dive for RPF and radio collision. Is it worth it uh, for the amount of points that it costs? Uh, but as always, just, uh, talk, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. 2,000 subs, almost there. You're going to do a free premium DD giveaway. So let's talk about it. So is it worth it? Um, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll take a look at it and see what the video um, will let you kind of see of gun power versus RPF build and sacrificing points. But what is radio location? Here it is. After the skills mastered, the player will have the direction to the nearest enemy ship indicated to them. The enemy player will also be alerted that a bearing was taken on their ship. So that's that exclamation point, or I'm sorry, the triangle point that's white that's has located that's what you see as a uh, person that is being detected and as opposed to look at my screen you can see this white arc uh, near my above my crosshair that shows hey this is the general direction of the closest enemy ship so it's giving you situational awareness as to what is in front of you or what is the closest ship to you and, and kind of gives you an, an advantage uh, to see whether where the enemy is at on the battlefield so right off the bat let's take a look at this we're in the vampire 2 right here on ranked uh, the, you see it changes right there, so you can see the arc changes slightly to the right, so it's always updating every few seconds, and then it re-pings again, and it sh lets you know. So right now we got a Gdansk uh, right in front of us, so we're going to switch to AP in the Vampire here, get as much of that um, AP damage as we can. The kind of British-style, daring-style destroyers have one of the best uh, AP for uh, DDs, and their rickish angles are really great as well, so I always recommend doing that. But right now, okay, we can't see them, right? So we have no radar that is being utilized in our area. We're getting radar, by the way, so we're spotted. So the only thing I can do at this point as a DD player is just rush them and get behind either cover or kind of just go nose in and just wait for him to appear. So my hydro goes up. I now spot him. He's less than five kilometers. At least I know a general direction where he was at. So I can point my ship into him and there he goes. Buddies to help me take him out. So that's kind of the example, and this is just, I'm speeding up the video because it's just more just daka daka fun, but that's not the point of the video today. The video is, um, and you can see the kind of daka daka or DPM that we're dishing out with not having that gun power or DPM reload as opposed to, you know, having that as a commander build, but we're using RPF instead. Now, RPF does cost a lot of points in your commander skills. It costs four commander skill points, so that's why you got to balance. Is this worth it to you? And I kind of want to show you... You know, you've already seen my videos and other video of, of good players that show how much firepower they can dish out in a particular DD. And um, I'm showing what this looks like. This is a vampire. I don't believe I put uh, the build will be at the end of the video clips, but I don't believe I had this full DPM gun build. It's really just the base gun reloads and adrenaline rush kicking in. That's really it. Uh, and uh, just uh, the basic cake bacon of um, DPM that I can do, but it, it's still doing decent amount of damage. You're getting enough firepower out there. Uh, but I said, is it worth it to have the situational awareness on the battlefield? And I would say it depends. Uh, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it just does depend. You know, as I teach tactics and, and techniques and, and procedures and, um, you know, my line of work, um, I've always I never give a direct answer. Is like, which one's better? It's like, no, let's say it depends because it depends on how you play and what kind of situation that you're in. Some people may want to advocate for having. Um, you know, situational awareness of where these uh, enemy players, especially destroyers, are. I think this is more for destroyer players and trying to find out where these guys are at. As you can see right there, the shift of the arcs. I wanted to show those clips because you can see as they're moving around the map, the arc does shift left and right. So you actually get to see who's the closest to you. And that may, may be a game changer to figure out where is this person at. As I always, we drive towards the air, the arc there. And I knew the Shima was right in front of me in smoke. And then obviously I popped the uh, hydro of five kilometers. He has nobody to spot for him. And now it's just pretty much open season on Shima Day with the Vampire 2. And I've noticed, I don't know, this is another side topic. I don't know, but I think Flamma did a video about the how the gun arcs and the gun, you know, the, the turret that's stacked above you is not aligned with the crosshairs of the one, the gun turret below you. I think it was, checked out that video about Flamma, but I mean, I feel like I just can't hit anything anymore these days with these, um, uh, these uh, updates and whatever. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad or I'm getting old or whatever. I'm just not able to hit destroyers like I used to. And I don't know if that's just through the updates or the coding or whatever. You guys let me know. You guys are smarter than I am on these uh, UI and mechanic stuff. Anyways, win the game right there, Vampire 2. Here's kind of the build of what it looks like. Uh, basic gun build uh, on the main uh, modules right there, but on the commander skills, obviously I didn't take Fearless Sprawler. I do have the AFT in there to give a little bit of 5% reduction of damage. And of course, you see RPF at the bottom there, four points. In this one, we're in our Marceau. Now, Marceau is deadly with the RPF. I mean, you're really just driving full speed at something and something's either going to one just drive into you because it's, it's really difficult to outrun a Marceau and second is they're going to probably have to engage you I mean most people I tend to see uh, well if they see a Marceau or a Colbert driving at you most of the time they 
they tend to like try to turn away and then they get spotted and they shoot or they'll just shoot first right off the bat revealing their position so either way it's win-win and now the marceau has a tactic right here to pick your battles i just uh turn away run away and mitigate as much damage as i can because i don't have heals right so my goal is not to die it's to outlaw outlast and survive everybody their summers goes down and uh, that's great he was spotted by radar and now we're just basically just docka docka gunboating right now and you can see this is not a full gunboat build marceau having the best dpm in the game for a destroyer player marceau is still uh, performs i would say effectively uh not as fast as a gun reload that i would like but again look at the gun reload you're still getting about less than three second gun reload which is still okay to me i mean like, just, you you take a look at it. look at the video and if this is your style of gameplay and you like this reload right here this reload rate then great um and here, here i'll give you a good example of the stalling right here and this is not a full gunboat deal a build deal marceau but it is dishing out enough shells to start fires and a so-called uh take away a little alpha damage there and let's just see if this, if this does it. So he, there's a Stalingrad going in typical reverse uh, radar, Soviet radar cruiser hugging islands and just uh, trying to tank. And good on him, but unfortunately bad on his, in the overall battle here because now we have so many people docking, docking and DPMing and starting fires that it's going to become very uh, detrimental to his cause. But hey, you know what? I digress. If people like to do this, so be it. And anyway, so we start another fire right there, and you can see that's it. The reload is not as fast as you would like it, but it is uh, getting enough where I could see. Okay, I could survive with this maybe. Um, I could live without maybe a 0.5 second uh, reduction in reload. Uh, but like I said, this is really the tool. Is the RPF? Um, is it worth it to sacrifice that reload for? Uh, this kind of um, you know situational awareness or uh, uh, battlefield awareness and understanding where the destroyers are at. I think this more plays a part for the destroyer uh, hunter, uh, especially I like hunting destroyers down. Like right here's an example here. I, I think I watched over uh, overbow. Um, he uh, he he basically uh, said, "Hey Marceau, you put." the rpf on this thing and you just drive straight at something and then you blow it up i mean that's essentially what it is i'm spotted from the moon and i just keep driving straight at this arc so i know i'm not wasting angles and uh reducing my speed and i really just use the front two guns and hunt down this um shimikaze he can't really do anything to outrun me and even though his detection is 5.6 me driving into him at least uh, at a kilometer at a time um it's hard to really run away from Marceau, and he's got to give angles to use his guns, which thereby also slows his speed down. They're giving me more of a close-in a, um, close engagement or closing the distance, if you will, and I'm just really just dock a dock and shoot him as much as I can. He takes me out, but we did our part. We killed all the DDs. So this is really good, I've noticed, maybe for DD hunting, um, especially in these high-alpha gun DD gunboats. You notice I'm using the Vampire and Marceau. I'll pick all the the really overpowered kind of uh, DD gunboats that to see how they work with this thing. And it's really pretty intense. Here we are in the Druid, one of my favorite uh, destroyers here. And we're seeing if the actual uh, RPF actually does give us some kind of an advantage or, um, you know, a better, uh, I guess you could say, a knowledge of the, the battle space. And this one I'm sacrificing reload. But again, the Druid already has a 1.7 second reload. So, I, I mean, reducing it at another 0.1 or 0.2 really didn't see much of a difference, honestly, to really warrant it. So let's take a look at it, if it actually does work. Notice that we're still um, getting out there and reaching somebody uh, enough to at least do some damage. Now, I notice that uh, you also can tell distance between two targets if you understand where the mechanics work of this. So right now, the Ragnar is at 5.6-ish, right? So he is the closest person. The closest thing to me is 5.6 kilometers away. We're shooting at the, the uh, Ragnar. Of course, we don't want to pick a battle with him. He can outgun us uh, from what we're at right now in our current position. And then also we have the Daring. And notice the RPF uh, arc indicator is showing to my back, saying, uh, hey, that is the closest target right there. We take out their uh, daring that's great one less destroy we only got two left now we also have a broadside moscow so i gotta show this i mean i just like shooting broadside cruisers i mean just for a druid this is literally a wet dream right here where you're just seeing a broadside cruiser and you're just gonna go ahead and plow all this heavy ap damage into his side notice that the moscow is now going ho oh, crap we're getting broadsided by a little destroyer we do not want this so he's gonna nose into us which is the only smart move you can really do at this point but he's giving full broadside to a petro uh, and also an Elbing, I believe, on the, the western side. So that's kind of scary right there. He would rather put broadside to them than to me. So 
Anyways, we're being radared right now, so we don't have the the, the um, protection of uh, cover. So let, yep, he'd rather take that broadside or, than than take broadside to me. So uh, there you go. That's the beautiful thing about it being a um, a aggressive destroyer player. You cause guys to do these uh, kind of maneuvers. He's gonna focus on me now, and we're gonna shoot again. He takes more citadels from other people rather than me, so he'd rather take those than that. And anyways, that's what we do as a destroyer: take as much damage and distraction as possible, and boom, we shoot his nose, take him down. So notice the arc is still pointing to my Ragnar. That means that he was at 5.6. You can see the, that switch back and forth, and now we're now 5.3. So I, I, at least I have an idea of where that Ragnar is at uh, distance-wise because those things will shift based on dif distance. So if you have two different enemy players, you get to see, hey, I can actually figure out how much of a distance they are to me in relative terms. I'm sorry that was a lot to talk about, but you kind of can just watch the video. Rewind it back and forth to see how those arcs and numbers move. You can play around my, with that to your advantage to give you some situations we kill the third uh, player right there. That's three kills down. We did our part. We ended up winning the game. I'll just fast forward. I won't bore you to death. Um, but anyways, here's that build. Again, we we sacrificed all the gun reload for more heavy AP and RPF from the Drew build right there. And you can see how that kind of worked right there. I mean, does it give me enough information, situation awareness on the battlefield to warrant that? You you be the judge. You tell me. It, again, it depends on your play style. Uh, here we go. We know the uh, Z-52 is at us right now. He's coming right at us. So we're going to go ahead. And we knew that direction. We kept our guns pointing in that direction. And we know where he's at. We angle in on him. And now I can run away, pop the speed boost, and run and uh, disengage. So right there, right off the bat, it, this kind of helps for the initial push for DDs. I think that's a good for that aspect. If that is your play style, if you want to hunt DDs down. And really, there's nothing more than the Z-52 can do is just take all this damage. And, um, you know, he's got his Hydra up, but it doesn't do much uh, because we're already spotted anyways. And now we've got the other Shimikaze. Notice the RPF indicator switched over to him. I mean, he is the closest target, so now I know where he's at. Uh, so that at least I have some kind of idea of, well, what do we, how am I going to make a decision here? Do I push in? Do I turn away? Do I go push forward? Do I cap? Whatever that may be. Again, it, it gives you that kind of uh, heads up as to how you want to plan out your positioning and move forward. We'll fast forward the video. Everyone's just running away. I got the RPF indication on the other small one. I just drive straight at him and just see where it goes from there. So again, this is more of that aggr aggressive play style that you just want to go hunt DDs down. And it, this is how it would work uh, for me, that is. And uh, you guys use it how you want to use it and uh, you see how you want to employ it and uh, tell me your comments and your experiences with it. I think it's always good to know different perspectives there. Uh, small one right there, the gun build reload on the basic modules. But of course, on the uh, captain's build, we sacrifice purely gun build reload because I thought that the, I mean, the small one already has a good re base reload. We really opted for more range and RPF to reach out and touch the body. This one's a little more of a slow video. This is Z42. And this kind of gives you uh, more of, if you're that standoffish kind of uh, destroyer player, maybe th this is how you would employ it. I, I kind of tried it that way. Maybe then a torpedo boat. I was just in a Z42 and it, it just, it just kind of just worked out the way it was. Z42, just like a Z52, just put a little bit more guns. It's like the Haruguma of the German line. And notice I'm just keeping this RPF indicator in front of me and uh, kind of seeing where he's at. I know the Napoli is right there, but if it's shifted, I would know, okay, that's where the other destroyer player is at. But then we eventually found out that both destroyer players are on the other side of the map, so we're not in a really worry right now. We're kind of just using this as, hey, at least I got a gauge of where the majority of the guys are at uh, the, or the enemy players are at. And now really I'm just keeping this indicator in, uh, in my um, field of view in my gun direction so at least i'm not being surprised by somebody sneaking up on us and you know having a sneaky shima just all of a sudden torp your entire team from the flank right now we're just using that nice old ap on the z42 is very very powerful very good a lot of good damage that you can get out of this thing it does a very very significant damage especially at broadsides and uh doesn't have the best uh, i would say better uh, angles than the daring line would but hey it's still something uh these gun angles are pretty horrendous sometimes with the z42 so you got to be careful that you got to expose a little bit more broadside than i've been comfortable with but that's what you got to do use your quick smokes to get that damage in and you notice i'm in the smoke so i'm undetected the fearless brawler uh, would not activate so again this is more if you're not really worried about the fearless brawler and you're not going to get spotted anyways you're getting sh you're shooting from smoke then i guess you don't need fearless brawler because it won't be active since you're shooting from cover the whole time so rpf may be a good decision for you if you like that if you like the situational awareness of the whole thing that's great but as you can see really is this is just more of the standoff defensive role, hey, keep that enemy in my kind of current um, perspective where I know where they're at at all times. So I'm, I'm not going to get surprised by somebody because I've so many times I've been surprised by guys that I just didn't know were there. And right here we got the Napoli driving at us and these guns are not facing us. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can pump in as much damage as I can. Notice the angles here are not the greatest for this. So I might have to switch to HE here in a minute here. I think I was trying to see if I could plow them into the uh, the superstructure, but they are doing somewhat damage. 
Now he's shown a little bit more broadside here, and I want to pop the snow because we do not want to take any more unnecessary as we can. He fires a good salvo at us. We take a little bit of damage there. Yeah, and notice this AP damage is pretty uh, deadly. Um, it can put a lot of hurt on a, cr a broadside cruiser, so be careful there. We launch our torpedoes spread right there as well, and he's also within our hydro range, so if he does pop smoke, we will pop our hydro and reveal him. So again, this is just a really good idea especially if you are um, in smoke and you can't see the enemy maybe this uh, indicator will give you an idea of hey you're in smoke there's something uh, in this direction maybe you should be careful maybe not sit there and get torped or maybe even radar or hydroed so again that is another aspect that you can use it for uh, i'm not i've seen some people i've noticed a lot of people use it in um ranked in clan battles because i have always i'm always located for some reason because i'm the destroyer i'm always out in front so i know people have got it i, I just never thought about using it because i thought it was a waste of a point so that was my opinion about it but i've been start starting to hear people talk about it more in the, in the reddit and the comments say, hey rpf's a great idea great tool so i say you know what let's try it let's take a look at it does this give me um with that simple idea of just knowing where the closest guy is, especially when it comes to destroyer hunting, does that give me somewhat of an advantage or even help me uh, dictate where I put my ship or how I build the plan or how I position our um, our team? So, because I've always I've always been asking comments, hey, who has RPF? Anybody got RPF? Anybody RPF? And I'm always like, no, I don't, but maybe I should. <laughs> Let me try it out. But um, anyways, a little Daka Daka action on the Yamato here. Uh, the we don't have IFHG, I believe. I think it still pens 26 mils on this, on these guns. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the Z42. Um, let me take a look at that. I have to. I don't want to give you guys bad info here. Uh, Z42. What does the HE do on those things? So HE can pen. Yeah, 26 mil. So I was right. 26 mil. Uh, so it doesn't pen the 32 like uh, unless you put build for IFHG right there. But anyways, we shot the Yamato. What would you do? Whoop de do that is. And you notice we keep the arc and make sure we're not going to get surprised by Annapolis or Des Moines. And they just pop up out of nowhere, the radar. And here's the, the base uh, build right there, RPF instead of Fearless Brawler or Range. And, of course, we have AFT to just kind of give you that basic uh, reduction and reload. And here we are in the Druid. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not the Druid. But anyway, that was it. Um, uh, that is how uh, I see people using RPF and um, how it man, can affect or improve your game, maybe. Uh, you guys determine how you want to use it. Let me know your thoughts on it. What are you using with people using RPF? How do you guys use it in ranked or clan battles and your divisions and everything? Um, def definitely uh, curious to know. Uh, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you guys for your support. Appreciate everything you guys are doing, building the better community, and uh, always saying hi out there. If you do see me out there, make sure you say hi. And uh, hey, you might be on YouTube or a video or record. I'm always there to uh, do shout outs to guys and uh, appreciate everything you guys have done uh, for the community and uh, as well as learning. So you guys stay safe. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.